So sometimes I see feedback uh, online. I see this sometimes in the forums. I see it on the edX once in a while where people take one of the exams. Sometimes I'll have customers email or call in, in a near panic and say, oh my gosh, this test is so hard. It doesn't make sense. I worked in the industry uh, and I've been teaching for 10 years, but I had 20 years in the industry before that. And I never did that uh, in the industry or, you know, we I've been teaching Photoshop for 15 years in my program and we've never done it that way. And I get it, right? Because I'm the same way. I've got my own kind of personal way of working. I like the types of jobs that I like to pick up as a designer. Uh, but the thing is that this is an industry exam. And the applications that we work with, they span a lot of industries. And even when it's not you know, quite that big a span, there's still just so many different sort of niche jobs that you can get in the industry. Uh, you know, just to take an example, right? Photoshop, let's just do Photoshop because it's the most popular. But with Photoshop, you could be a photographer who uses Photoshop and you need to understand a lot of camera concepts. You could also be a graphic designer who uses Photoshop and you need to understand a lot more design principles and setting up pages and things. There's not a lot of overlap. So you may be a photographer who's used Photoshop for 20 years, but you don't have experience with these areas that are a little bit more print or design or video based. But that's all part of Photoshop, right, in the industry. So what Certiport and Adobe do is that they reach out to industry professionals, right, companies that are hiring and saying, what are you looking for? What are you expecting a entry level person to know? And again, using Photoshop as an example, this guy has a print house. He may have a certain set of expectations where there's some overlap, but also a lot of differences between this guy who's a web design company and they use Photoshop to create web images. There's a big difference between designing for web and designing for print. Different color space, different units of measure, uh, along with sort of the trends and the things that you need to consider when working. In the same way, this may be a video house that uses Photoshop to create bottom thirds or graphics for the screen that's a whole different way of working and you need to understand some of the other concepts that relate just to video. Because the exams address the software, if the software is used in multiple industries, there's gonna be questions possibly that reach into an industry that you don't have any experience with. And students, you need to know this too, that as a Photoshop designer or as an Illustrator user or Premiere person, you may have uh, two or three different jobs where there's not a whole ton of overlap in the way that you use the application because these applications are so powerful and so popular. So keep that in mind um, that there are not only different ways of using the software and different sort of streams in the industry with each piece of software, but this industry is changing so fast. Um, you know, I mean, print, I'm not going to say that print is dead, but print is changing. Like we uh, consume a lot of information these days, not through newspapers and magazines, but through video, through YouTube, through the internet. The whole world is changing and it's just changing super fast. And you need to be able to make those adjustments. Um, teachers in your curriculum, students in your workflow. The world of design changes. The software changes fast. Design trends change even faster. Uh, technology changes, the way that people, you know, bring in images and stuff just changes. And there's just so many things that you need to kind of be aware of. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about these exams. It may be that you are an excellent Photoshop user and you don't pass the exam the first time because it asks a bunch of questions that are just outside your area because you were in sort of a narrower niche. So keep that in mind. Um, I believe that the exams are really great. Uh, and But again, I'm a teacher with an opinion, just like a lot of you are, students or students with opinions. Um, this is, these objectives that CertiPort and Adobe come together to create, these are derived from the input from hundreds of industry professionals who are hiring and know what they need. And that's the goal of an industry exam, is to prepare students or prepare anybody who takes the exam to be able to walk into the industry and get a job. And if the trends all change, then the exams should, and in my experience will reflect that, we need to be aware of that so that uh, we're not kind of surprised. 
Um, and it, we just need to make sure that we're constantly aware of the trends and things happening in the industry. And here at ACA Test Prep, we pride ourselves on adjusting well because it's purely video based. We can make changes really fast with books. It's a lot harder because there's print cycles and you can't just change a book. Uh, once it's out in somebody's hands, there's no way to change the words on the page. Here with video and web pages is a lot easier to change. So uh, that's one advantage of any sort of online related curriculum is that updates can happen a lot faster than printed materials. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Make sure that you're also aware of the MQC. That's the minimally qualified candidate. Um, it is not a student with one year of experience that's how long it probably takes to get all of it but just because a student has had one year of a photoshop class if it's all solely photography they won't pass the exam because they won't understand the print concepts and the web concepts which are also part of working with photoshop in the industry and that's what these certifications are trying to do. So uh, I feel like this video is a little bit long, but I just want to make sure that I explain this because this is something that is a little bit confusing to people. Uh, when I started with the ACA, it was confusing for me. But as I've learned more, I've become to truly appreciate everything about the ACA and the way that the objectives are written, not to make it so that my class is easy or it kind of caters to my way, but for the kids to get a working job right now in all of the different ways that you can use this piece of software, do they know the basic stuff that they generally need to know? That's what the exam's all about.